Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In this recording, we'll illustrate the use of several HSM strategies to machine the mold insert as shown on the screen. We'll first start with the HSR options in order to rough out the material that's there. In our first operation, you can see we're using the HSR roughing operation of HM. And the tool in this particular case is a large end mill, a 20 millimeter end mill. And if we go into our passes, you'll see that we're leaving 0.3 millimeters of material for the semi-finished cuts. We'll also be stepping down every five millimeters and the step over type will be HM spiral. Taking a look at the solid verify simulation, you'll see that the material is being milled out from the outside exactly the way we wanted it to be machined out. Now in our next operation, we'll be doing a rest roughing operation in order to bring down these large steps that were done over here plus using a smaller end mill to get into areas where this previous operation could not get into. So if we go into the operation itself, you'll see we'll be using the option of rest roughing. The tool will be a smaller end mill, a 12 millimeter ball end mill in this particular case. And if we go into passes, we'll still be keeping the wall offset of 0.3 millimeters, but stepping down this time every two millimeters instead of every five millimeters. If we take a look, at the simulation, you'll see that we're only working in the areas where the previous tool was not able to machine and only working on the steps, making them also into smaller steps, making it easier for the semi-finish and the finish operation to work on. Next, we'll be doing a semi-finish operation before the finish, allowing for the finish to have less pressure on it and also to allow for a better finish on the part itself. If we go into the operation, we'll be using the option of HSM linear machining. If we take a look at the tool, the tool in this particular case will be a 10 millimeter bore mill. And I've also activated the applied fillet options for the part. If I go into the passes, you'll see that we'll be leaving 0.1 millimeters on the part for the finish and with a step over of every two millimeters. If I were to take a look at the operation itself, you'll see that it's working linear on the entire part and the applied fillet allowed for these areas to have a fillet on the toolpath instead of a sharp corner that would have been because of the larger end mill radius over here, which is larger than the part radius as shown over here. Next, we'll be doing a rest machining operation on these corners of the part. And if I were to open up the operation, you'll see that we'll be using a ball end mill of six millimeters, giving it a reference tool of 12 millimeters, which determines where the rest machining will work on the part itself. If I go into my passes, you'll see I'll be doing a 0.1 millimeter offset on the wall and floor for the semi-finish, leaving material over for the finish operation. If we take a quick look at the simulation, you'll see that it works exactly on all of the corners for the rest machining cleaning it out, making it easier for the finish cut to work in those areas as well. Now, from this point on, we'll be working on our finish cuts. If we go into our first operation for our finish, we'll be using the option of linear machining. And in this particular case, I'll be using a six millimeter ball end mill. And again, I'll be using the apply fillets so that we don't have any sharp turns into the corners itself. In this particular case, my constraint boundaries will be in this area only. I only want to work at this point only on these surfaces around here, leaving this area over here for a different operation. If I go into my passes, you'll see it'll be working at every 0.2 millimeters, 
and having a wall and floor offset of zero, which means we'll be doing a finished cut. Taking a quick look at our simulation, you'll see that our tool works exactly in those areas in a linear fashion. And, and since I do not want to work in this area, it works around that core area itself. Machining everything around it, making for a nice smooth finish on those areas. Our next operation will be doing another finish cut, this time on the core area in, in the middle of the part. For that, we'll be using a combined constant Z together with linear machining. As I want to have areas that are steep machined with the constant Z, but the shallow areas done with the linear machining. So again, I'll be using an apply fillet in this case as well. And my tool will also be the six millimeter ball end mill. My constraint boundaries in this particular case is just the middle area as shown over here. In my constant Z passes, we'll be going down every 0.2 millimeters. And since I only want to work in the steep areas, I'll be working only between 35 and 90 degrees, whereas in the linear passes, we'll be working between zero and 38 degrees, giving a three degree overlap between the two operations. I also set the defined angle to 90 degrees as I want to work in this direction over here, 90 degrees to the part when I do the linear operations. If we take a quick look at our simulation, you'll see that we're first working in a constant Z on these areas, which are the steep areas on the part. And if I zoom into the corners, you'll see that we also have a radius in the corner because of the applied fillet that I put inside the operation itself. And then when it finishes the constant Z operations, working on the steep areas, it'll automatically go to the linear operations as shown over here, working on the shallow areas only. Now in our next operation, we'll be doing the rest machining to finish off these corners over here. If I were to open up the operation itself, you'll see we'll be using a four millimeters ball end mill. And if we go into our reference tool, you'll see that we'll be using 8.2 millimeters of a reference tool, which determines exactly where this tool will work. If we take a look at our simulation, you'll see that the tool is working exactly in those corners over there. As shown, every single corner is picked up automatically, which finishes off every single corner. Now there's still one area I'd like to machine a little better, and that's this area over here, as well as this area on the other side as well. So for that, I'm going to use one more operation of HSM with the use of 3D constant step over. In this particular case, I'll be using a four millimeter ball end mill where my drive boundaries will be these areas over here on top of these surfaces over there. And my constraint boundaries will be the exact same thing. So it'll actually work in a constant step over fashion in these areas over there. If we take a quick look at the simulation of the part itself, you'll see that the tool works exactly in these areas, making working its way from the outside in with a constant step over in those areas. First finishing off one side and then finishing off the other side as shown over here, making for a really smooth finish in those small areas as well. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website, www.solidcam.com and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.